This is a special presentation of Way 31 Sports. It's the McCurry Big Game Friday night. Hello, Alabama, find a comfortable spot. We got high school football and it's coming out hot. Now here we are and the lights are shining. It's the McCurry Band and Car Rental Big Game Friday Night. The Madison Bowl Crosstown Rivals square off with over 5,000 in attendance with bragging rights on the line in our Big Game Friday Night Game of the Week. Well, in our rivalry game of the week, it's a matchup that spans over 50 years. It's the Battle of Huntsville. The Panthers taking on Grissom in our Big Game Friday Night Rivalry Game of the Week. Hello and welcome into the Week 2 edition of Big Game Friday Night. We roll out another great show for you here on Way 31 tonight here with Max Cohan. And Max, with the beginning of region play finally here, stakes a little higher. Even though it's only the third week of play, tonight's game could very well impact region championships. Yeah, that's right. Every team 0-0 in region play, but bragging rights also on the line. And that's because this week's Game of the Week takes us out to James Clemens. Well, not out to James Clemens, but it's between James Clemens yeah. and Bob Jones. They're squaring off <laughs> in the Madison Bowl. So we head out to Madison City Stadium, where Xavier Wary is standing by. Nolan and Max, players, coaches, students, teachers, and even parents, they understand just how big of a game the Madison Bowl is. And look, coming into this one, Bob Jones, they're looking for their very first victory of the season. James Clemens is looking to get win number two. Let's see how our big game Friday night game of the week played out. We travel to Madison City School Stadium for the city's most intense rivalry. Before the game, the James Clemens student section was loud, decked in all white. In the opposite end zone, it was a sea of red as the Patriots showed their support. We pick things up in the first quarter. Ty Marsh is going to connect with Kevon Cooper. He evades one defender and cuts it upfield for a big gain. He would lose the ball after being brought down, but the refs say no fumble. Drive continues for the Jets. Near the goal line, Marsh on this QB sneak gets a good push from the big guys up front. The Jets get on the board 7-0. On the Patriots' next drive after marching down the field, they had a steady diet of Turin Washington. And on this possession, he would carry that 240-pound frame in the end zone. Pats would miss the extra point. Jets lead 7-6. And later in the second, James Clemens looking for an explosive play. And they would get just that. Marsh rolling to his right, and there's this one deep to guess who? Cooper and he would cruise in for the score. James Clemens up 13 to six in the student section. Well, they are loving every second of it. And Bob Jones would try to respond, but they throw an interception late in the second half. That would lead to a Jets TD as time expired. James Clemens would cruise to a victory over Bob Jones in this one, winning 40 to 13. I'm here with head coach Chad McGee after a pretty dominating victory. Coach, what was working so well uh, for you guys tonight? Yeah, you know, I didn't think we executed real well early and it was a little sloppy. Um, we got a lot of mistakes to clean up, um, but I thought we got back to running the ball, opening up the play action pass for us. Um, special teams punt return was really good. Kickoff return was really good. We thought that was a phase that we could win here, and, uh, and we did, and Ty Doty had a touchdown return and a big kickoff return. Um, so, and you know, uh, defense, you know, outside of one play, I thought we played pretty solid. It's obviously a big win to beat your rival, but more importantly, you're 1-0 in region play. Talk about what that means for you. Well, we, that's what we talk about. Everybody's 0-0, and, and we got to be 1-0 if we want to be where we need to be at the end of the season as far as seeding and trying to host a playoff game. Okay, well, Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. Yep, and again, James Clemens, they win this one, and now they are 2-1 and one on the season. As we just mentioned, they got their first region victory here tonight. As far as Bob Jones is concerned, well, they are still looking for their first victory of the season. They are now 0-3 on the year. I'm reporting in Madison City Stadium tonight. Xavier Wary, Point 21 Sports. Yeah, so there you have it. James Clemens starts off region play with a big win in the Madison Bowl. 1-0 in region play. And 7A Region 4 is full of good teams. Oh, yeah. At Sparkman High School tonight, the Senators were in action hosting the Austin Black Bears, both of the teams 2-0, both thinking they have what it takes to win the region. Sparkman looking to pitch their third consecutive shutout this season as they host the Black Bears. We jump into this one with the Senators leading 7-0. Well, how about we double that? Josh Ward with the dime to Brody Slate in the corner. Slate says, stay down. They're up 14-zip. 
Now, Black Bears trying to do something before the end of the half. Chuck Bailey fakes the handoff and rolls into trouble. Two Senators right there to take him down. Sparkman's defense holding tight a little bit later. Same drive, Josh Murphy bringing the thunder as they keep the Black Bears off the board in the first two quarters. But Austin would roar back in the second half, but miss the would-be game-tying field goal as Sparkman hangs on to win 21 to 18. Yeah, speaking of teams with big aspirations this year, Athens is another one of those teams. 2-0 to begin this season. They were taking on a region foe Decatur tonight at home in their first region showdown of the season. And man, this Athens team looks legit. But give credit to the Decatur Red Raiders. They have some ball players, just like Braden Duper, who calls his own number on this one. He's down the sideline. He He's got space. He's going to pick up a big first down for the Red Raiders, and they would not be able to convert, though. Athens, they would capitalize on that by giving it to who else but Jay Sean Ridgel. He's going to follow his blockers and find the end zone for the early score. No surprise there that he's in the end zone. The Athens Golden Eagles move to 3-0 with a deafening win over the Red Raiders, 44-16. In 6A play, Hartzell has owned the North for the past two seasons, looking to move one step closer to another region title tonight, opening Region 7 play against Coleman. And based on these highlights, you would think defense was on full display with both squads making it known they did not want to give up yards. Spoiler alert, that was not the case. Ry Fletcher on the carry, he's got nowhere to go. So with the ground game shut down, the Tigers have to look to the air. Landon Blackwood back to pass, but none of his guys are open and it's scramble time. He shakes and bakes, but eventually he becomes a pancake as Coleman's defense strikes again. But that would not show on the scoreboard as it's Hartzell's defense that pitches the shutout. 42 to nothing. In the other Region 7 game taking place tonight, it's Muscle Shoals that continues its impressive season. They move to 3-0 with a 42-0 win over Columbia. Yeah, speaking of big-time region matchups, let's move to Class 5A Region 8. Ardmore found itself looking for its first win of the season as they were hosting Brewer tonight. Ardmore, always a great atmosphere, and it was homecoming tonight at the home of cool. the Tigers. Thanks and the Patriots, they were hoping to spoil the celebrations. Case and Odin scrambling. He's going to find his tied in. Talion will height comfort in the end zone for the score. But the Tigers, they would bounce back. How about a handoff to Connor Kirby? He's going to power his way forward for a big Ardmore first down. Some hard nose running there from the back. The Tigers and Patriots, they go back and forth all night. But in the end, it's Brewer that spoils the homecoming party with a 21-19 win and a nail biter. Looking at some other scores from that region, the Golden Tigers continue to roll as they take down the Red Devils 37-7, while Fairview took the trip to Limestone County to take on the Indians and came home winners, beating them 56-21. All right, guys, well, it's already time for us to take our first time out of the show. But don't go anywhere, because when Way 31 returns, it's time for our big game Friday night rivalry game of the week. Stay tuned for Big Game Friday night! Back into Big Game Friday night, everyone. It was an incredible night for high school football in the state of Alabama. Some great region matchups, but also some rivalry matchups as well. Yeah, you could say that again. <laughs> At Milton Frank Stadium tonight, it was the 53rd all-time meeting between the Huntsville Panthers and the Grissom Tigers, squaring off in a 7-8 Region 4 showdown. And man, you could feel the energy at Milton Frank. Oh, the yeah. most filled we've seen it in a while. Huntsville knocking at the door, already up 3-0. Jax McClung finds a wide open Chase Carton in the back of the end zone for the early score, and it's 10-zip, and they wouldn't stop there. Second quarter, more for Huntsville. This time, McClung rolling right and finding Ashton Caldwell at the pylon for the score. Grissom, they struggled to keep possession in this one. Multiple fumbles, including this one, which was recovered by Darren Jones. That led to another score for the Panthers as they move to 1-0 in region play with a 31-zip win over their crosstown rivals. Now, I'm, proud, I'm proud of the way we played you know, tonight coming off a, a tough Oxford loss. And um, you know, we, 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 got out, we, we got off to a, a slow start offensively, but then we sort of came into ourselves. Really proud of the way the defense played all night. Created a lot of turnovers, 
Coach Davis field position down there where we were able to put the ball in. And then that we, we made a field goal. Our special teams was good. We're kicking the ball in the end zone. So definitely something to build on. In the other 7A North Alabama showdown, the Forge Falcons were on the road tonight at Albertville to take all the Aggies. And it was a special night in Albertville tonight as the Aggies honored teammate Julius Jameer before the game, who of course tragically died in a car crash on his way to football practice on Monday. Our thoughts and prayers are out with the Aggies tonight. They made sure to honor JJ tonight as well, taking his jersey out for the coin toss. And it was a powerful moment for everyone in attendance. How about we pick up with some of the highlights now? We'll pick up late in the second quarter. Forlitz leading this one 14 to nothing at the time when Deshaun Anders breaks through for the Falcons, setting up first and goal for Florence. And on their next play, it's a quick pass to Xavier Garner. He powers through for a Falcon touchdown, 20 to nothing. It was a tough night for the Albertville Aggies. They were able to find the end zone, though, but they do fall to Florence in this one. 28 to 6, the final big win for Florence, their first win of the year. At Buckhorn tonight, the Bucks were hosting their first home game of the season, taking on Gadsden City in a big time 6A Region 8 matchup. Yeah, we jump into this one with the Bucks already in a bad spot, down 21 0, and it's about to get worse. Hand off to TJ Worthy, and he makes his way past the line with ease, and then it's off to the races. One man to beat, and he's going to get his block as he outruns the Bucks to give the Titans a four score advantage. The Bucks would look to the skies to try to cut into the deficit, but would be unable to find their way back into this one as Gadsden City dominates 49 to 14. Staying in Region 8, how about the League Generals off to a 2-0 start for the first time since 2017, looking to make it 3-0 against Hazel Green. And this one was interesting from the opening kick. A squibber to start things off, and Franklin Anderson Jr. takes advantage of the short field and runs with it, getting the angle he wants and taking it to the sideline, putting the Trojans in great position on their first possession. They finish that drive with a touchdown. Brady Crawford connects with Christian Tipton. Hazel Green up 7-zip, but not for long. LaShawn Van hits Brandon Johnson, and and no one can stop number one as Lee puts a six spot on the board. Now they'd still trail after missing the extra point, but lose to 3-0 in the end with the 46-21 dub. Yeah, big win for Lee. That game, not the only important matchup of the night, though. Tonight we had some big Class A games. Boaz, they were on the road at Scottsboro tonight. And it's Scottsboro that runs away with this one, 63-38. Well, Douglas, the Eagles at home hosting the Arab Knights. This could be an important final come the end of the season. It's the Knights that take it 21 to 14. One team that looks like it has state championship aspirations this year is the Madison Academy Mustangs. 2-0 oh, yeah. on the season and hosting Pennington tonight. Yeah, but Max, if you're going to talk state championship football, you gotta of course do well in your region. And that's tough to do when you got Pennington on the other side of the ball. They came to play, especially their defense. Coming up with a big tackle on this one, Jackson Reese goes down. Madison Academy, they were playing without four starting offensive linemen and it showed Pennington with another big sack. The Madison Academy defense just as impressive. Check out this bat away here to get the Mustangs out of a first and goal situation. In the end, the Madison Academy Mustangs, they were able to sneak out a win at home over their region arrival. 26 to 20, the Mustangs take it. All right, guys, well, it's already time for us to take our second timeout of the night, but don't move a muscle. Coming up next, we turn our sights on Class 4A. More scores and highlights coming up next on Big Game Friday Night. Bob Jones High School Marching Band, you're watching Wave 31, Big Game, Friday night. All right, how about that? A big congratulations to the Bob Jones Marching Band on winning this week's Star Market Spirit Award. Part of the reason the Madison Bowl is so special because those two bands are rocking it all night. You gotta love a game where the Patriots marching band is in town. All right, now let's get back to some football with another rivalry matchup. Yeah, it's a battle between two of Madison County's private schools, St. John Paul, hosting the Randolph Raiders tonight, a game that turned out to be one of the best. JP2 backs against the goal line. Luke Soggy gets 
taken out in the end zone, but he gets the pass off and finds Andrew Maroika all alone down the field in for the 99-yard touchdown reception. What a play for the Falcons to take a 12-7 lead at the time over the Randolph Raiders. But the Raiders, they would look to respond. Williams Mitchell dumps one off to Collins, and the senior tailback takes this one, picks up a cool 20 yards. The Randolph Raiders defense, they would stand strong in this one, not letting up another point to the Falcons as the Raiders win this one 46 to 12. All right, let's stay in class 4A and head to Madison County where the Tigers and Bulldogs were squaring off, both looking for their first win of the year. And man, you could tell these two teams were hungry for a win. We'll pick up in the first quarter and the Tigers were moving the ball with ease. D King with the swing pass and he's going to work. Look at that, down the sidelines, picking up a Madison County first down. And if there's one thing we know about Kings, they're going to get paid. King again, this time cuts across the green, stiff arming defenders, outrunning the rest, and finds pay dirt. Tie game 7 7. Priceville would respond though. They go right down the field and blitz. Clemens comes up big. How about the dive to the pylon for six as the Priceville Bulldogs go on the road and they get their first win of the year 48 to 21 over the Tigers? The West Morgan Rebels and the Brooks Lions are two teams that think they have what it takes to claim the Class 4A Region 7 crown. And tonight, they squared off in an important region matchup. The Rebels looking good tonight. And they wasted no time getting that offense going on the road. To the flats for Jarius Mosley, who shakes off a tackle and heads down the sideline for a big first down. And that would lead to a score for who else? But Jalen Fletcher, we've said his name on this show one or two times. Touchdown Rebels, but Brooks would look to respond on the goal line when Garrett Burrow is going to olay his way through the defense and finds the end zone. But it's too hard to keep up with that West Morgan offense as the Rebels take this one on the road tonight. 83-53, to make it the fourth highest scoring game in Alabama high school history. Well, just down the road at Central tonight, the Wildcats were hosting county rival Wolf with a big region game and bragging rights on the line. And in a game like this, you have to love big plays. Well, how about this one? Evan Hansen fired out of the backfield like a rocket, and after a few quick cuts, he's in open space, and it looks like the touchdown is his, but Everett Roberson with a diving tackle to save the score. What an effort, but that only delayed the touchdown. Hunter Palmer finishes the job, and it's celebration time for the Wildcats as they go up 49 zip, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. Roberson showed off that speed on the touchdown saving tackle, then turns on the burners for a kickoff return touchdown, but in the end, Central goes on to take this one 55 to 14. Also in action tonight, Rogers was on the road at East Lawrence and took home a road win. It was 36 to 28, while at Deschler, the Tigers were hosting West Limestone, celebrating their centennial and celebrated a big 55 14 win. Now let's flip things over to the east side of the state for this next one at Geraldine tonight. The Bulldogs riding high off of their win over Fife last week. And they were taking on a Plainview team that has impressed early. The Bulldogs continued their winning streak tonight, taking home a 35-3 win over the Bears. Look out, Geraldine Bulldogs look like a team to reckon with. 35-3, they get the win. All right, well, it's already time for us to take our third and final time out of the show. But don't go anywhere, because when Way 31 returns, we head to Decatur for a big-time 1A showdown between the Eagles and the Tigers. Stay tuned for more Big Game Friday night. Go Falcons! Let's go Falcons! All right, welcome back into Big Game Friday Night, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Let's turn our attention to Class 1A, DHCA 2-0 to start the year, welcoming Valley Head to town for a Week 2 showdown. Yeah, we jump into this one with Valley Head driving, looking for a first down. It's William Titan Blevins on the keeper, lowering the shoulder and forcing his way through the Eagles defense for a first down. But he'd make a mistake, floating one up for Nolan Holyden. And Dalton Gay says, let's go the other way. 
The interception is in open space, and it looks like he's going to make it all the way back, but he doesn't quite reach the end zone. The Cater Heritage would still get the points, finishing the drive in the end zone as Severius Evans takes the handoff and a couple defenders across the line. DHCA adds to their win total with this one, 34 to 21. Yeah, I think they have 3-0 on the season yeah. after that one. We can't forget about another exciting week in college football with some huge matchups. <laughs> yeah, the third-ranked Crimson Tide welcome 11th-ranked Texas to town. I'll be at that one in Tuscaloosa covering the action kickoffs at first 6 o'clock. And the Auburn Tigers will travel to the Golden State to take on the Cal Golden Gate. Golden Bears in an SEC Pac-12 showdown. Both the Tigers and Bears enter this matchup 1-0 after big wins over a group of five teams. All right, well, before we sign off for the night, we'll take this time to thank our radio sponsors. Thanks so much for making this show possible. And, of course, a massive thank you to everyone that helps make this show possible, from production to our EP, Sarah Jones, to our shooters on the sidelines. This show would not be possible without any of them. And, of course, a massive thank you to everyone that tunes in each and every week and makes Way 31 your home for high school football. And to finish off this week's show, we have to end things the same way we do every week with our big game, <laughs> Friday Night Top Lights. Good night, everybody. Special presentation of Wave 31 Sports.